Hey friends, it's Julie. Welcome back to Row & Co Farms. So this morning I was out and about running errands and I went to Tractor Supply and also to my local nursery and I picked up a whole bunch of perennial fruit and vegetable plants. Uh, things that will come back to us every single year and provide a harvest for our family. Um, so I did a little bit of an investment today for things that'll pay off for years to come. All right guys, so you can see behind me here, got a nice little collection of plants. All this stuff back here are flower farm things and some of my vegetables, there's some onions there. Um, but let's get to this uh, new bunch of plants that we got today. So there are four of these uh, pink lemonade blueberries. Um, and those are like a, obviously a pink blueberry. Um, and I think that those are gonna be a really good addition to what we already have. Um, we have uh, four or five blueberry plants already. I believe they are the premier blueberry, um, if I remember correctly. So this is just gonna be another variety to add to what we already have. Um, currently those four or five that we um, harvest from, they're very small uh, still. We've only had them here for about three years. Uh, so we, we get very little from them currently but we wanna just be able to have more and more as time progresses. Uh, so the next thing here, we have the Navajo blackberry, and I also got another variety of blackberry. Yes, the Nat Natchez blackberry. Um, so I got three different blackberries. I don't know what the other, the other one is also another Natchez blackberry. Um, and they're already, nicely established. They're several feet tall. They'll definitely produce a few uh, berries this year, uh, but they'll just continue to get bigger and bigger. Um, the next thing we got uh, was something that my husband requested, and that's something that he grew up eating was muscadines. Uh, so I have these two muscadine vines. I'm pretty sure that's what I got. Yes, the Nesbitt muscadine. So he really likes muscadines. He grew up eating that. He would, he's grown up in the South and uh, he asked for those. So I got two of the muscadine vines. We're gonna grow those along one of our fence lines. Uh, and then, oh, this last one is another one of our uh, blackberries. Um, so those are the things that I picked up from the local nursery. And then at Tractor Supply, I got some of their kind of packaged cuttings that you can pick up. Um, so this is a raspberry cutting, the Heritage Raspberry. I got two of those. Um, so that way we'll have a little bit of a variety, blackberries and raspberries. And then I also got this seedless grape, white seedless grape. Um, so that is all for the fruits. Then the vegetables, I picked up uh, three packs of this purple passion asparagus and there's three plants in each so I got nine crowns of the purple passion asparagus and then I got let's see here uh, this is the Mary Washington asparagus I got two two packages of this uh, so total there's eight plants of that and then I got uh, two packs of this rhubarb and there's two plants in each one of these and rhubarb is a, it looks kind of like celery a little bit, um, but it's pink and it's, uh, it's sweet. Um, I, I, I've actually never had it, but I know lots and lots of people have recommended that I should grow it and that it's very prolific and it comes back year after year um, and just gets bigger and bigger. So, um, so yeah, I think this is gonna be a great addition to our current food forest that we already have. And so what I think I'll do is let's go around and take a look at some of the stuff that we've already established on our property and things that we still wanna to work towards in the future. So we're gonna head out into the garden first and we have two peach trees out here. There's one down here and one right here. These we installed two years ago and they were already two years old, no, three years old when we got them. And this year they should produce fruit for us. And we can actually see on here that we have peaches starting to form. We did have a late frost here. And so we may not get a lot of peaches on this tree because of that, but we are going to get some. And we do have several of these peach trees. So we're gonna get a few peaches this year. 
And then our other one is, you can see just past there on the end, it also has a few peaches on it. Um, can't hardly tell. On the other side of this trellis, I have a premier blueberry and another premier blueberry over here. And we may end up moving those um, out of this location because this is where I like to grow my tomatoes. Uh, so this is probably a good time to get these out of here and put them in a new spot. Um, so right over here, we have this tub which has a small strawberry patch in it. And we just need to, um, we just need to move this patch somewhere else and work on um, fertilizing and getting these guys ready for this year. Um, I haven't really done a lot with them, but strawberries are very winter hardy and they will come back year after year also. Um, so again, fruits are a great thing to have in your garden. Uh, so right here along this fence line, we have um, a nice little grapevine that's been here for now about four years. And I think this year we'll actually get some good grapes from it. Um, it goes all the way down. And then I have another one that's starting down here. My husband has accidentally chopped that one off every single year for the last three years. But it's trying every year to come back. So hopefully he will, he will not chop it down. I'm going to try to get that tied back up. But this one here has really, really taken off. And you can already see all these places where we're gonna have grapes. They're already starting. And there are lots and lots of them. So those new muscadines and those other grapes we got will just add to our collection here. And here, this uh, was already on the property when we moved here, and it's just a t uh, obviously grown bigger and bigger over the years, and this is a fig tree. And it produces just monstrous amounts of figs every year, so we always have a nice little harvest there, and it, they're just really, really taken off this year. And then behind the fig tree here, we have another peach tree. See if it's got some peaches on it. Oh yeah, we definitely have peaches here. You can see one there. You can see quite a few here, here. And it's just neat because right here in the center is like the seed part. And they're already fuzzy, just like a peach would be. So this tree has quite a few on it. And then we had a tree next to it there, but you see that one, it didn't make it. I'm not sure what happened there did not survive, but we'll dig that one out. And we're actually, uh, if you guys remember, we propagated elderberry uh, trees a while back and we're gonna be planting those all along this fence here. And then we'll probably be adding our blueberries underneath them. Um, so this whole area here will become our berry patch and um, more fruit trees. And then the rest of our fruit trees are right up here on this hill. We'll start right over here. This is a plum tree. And again, we had, this had lots of blossoms on it. We had a late, late frost and it may have zapped those. So I don't think that we're gonna get any fruit on this tree this year. We have not gotten any fruit so far. Uh, this tree is about four years old. Okay, then right here, this is another peach tree, and I did not prune this last year. This needs pruning. A lot of this stuff, sh this growth should not be here. Um, but you can see this peach tree, it did not, it does not have any peaches on it. And I actually have several branches that look like they have died. So I'm really gonna have to tend to this tree a little bit and do a little bit of pruning. This peach tree also has died. It's almost the exact opposite of the other one. The other one has a lot of good branches and like one dead one. This one has a lot of dead branches and one good one. So we will be pulling this entire tree out uh, because it's no good. Um, it's, it died over the winter. Uh, then over here, we have an apple tree. Uh, I believe this is a 
it's some type of red apple. I can't remember which one, but it's a red apple. And then this one over here is another apple tree. And it is some type of, maybe it's a golden delicious or one of those type of varieties. So yeah, we have a good variety of fruit trees here. And then last, we had, when we moved here, there were two established pear trees. Um, so there's two varieties. Uh, one is, I don't know which kind they are, I just know that they're different. This one is like a reddish color pear. So you can already see where those are forming. And then on the other tree, it bloomed first and it all the blooms died. So there are no blooms on this tree and it actually has a lot of damage on the leaves. We think it has some type of virus or disease and we may end up having to, uh, to cut that tree down completely uh, because you can see it's starting to spread to this tree and I'm really not sure what it is, but it is on this tree too. So yeah, I'm not sure what's wrong with it, but we do have several established trees here. They do give us quite a bit of fruit, especially these pear trees. So yeah, everyone, if you have the opportunity or the space to plant some type of perennial fruit or vegetable, you should definitely get out there and do it. It's always gonna be a benefit to you and your family. It's a small investment up front and it's a huge payoff in the end. So guys, let's talk about where we installed all those blueberry, raspberry, and blackberry bushes. So right here along the side of my porch, we went ahead and added in multiple blueberry bushes. We already had a few here, but we added a few more. Um, and then we also added in all of our blackberries and raspberries down on the end. Uh, we also have a fig tree down on the very end, but let's take a look at what we have here. We've installed five blueberries in this area, and those will get pretty big and they will come up pretty high here um, probably up to the top of the, of the porch railing. Uh, so this is a great way to install some, some food in places that you wouldn't normally see it. So as landscaping, uh, for instance, instead of, um, instead of other bushes that you would normally put. Um, so yeah, here we have our raspberry and blackberry vines. This one back, back here was already, uh, one that we had installed a few years ago. So it's coming back nicely. And then these other ones were the ones that we just picked up the other day. And then there's a couple that are very small. Uh, they're still in that dormant phase. We're waiting for them to emerge. So we have um, four blackberries, two raspberries, those five blueberries back there, and then this beautiful brown turkey fig. So this, bit, this fig tree isn't quite as big as that other fig tree that we looked at the other day on the other side of the property. Um, but this one has come along really nicely and I think we're going to get a harvest off of this tree this year. You see, it's already pretty big. It's as, it's the same height as me and it's only going to continue to get bigger over time. So it's really going to develop in the corner of the house here. Um, and you know, fill out nicely. I, I really, I think we're going to enjoy that. Eventually we'll be able to pick pigs, pick, <laughs> pick figs from the front porch. <laughs> Say that three times real fast. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah, so I'm really enjoying the placement of these, um, of these trees here. It falls in nicely with the rest of our little fruit orchard that we've placed behind me here. Um, and then back here, right behind us is where that cow pasture is and where we planted all those elderberries. So this is uh, this blueberry and berry patch here is right next to the rest of our fruit orchard. Those are our pear trees. And then down here are the rest of those fruit trees that I showed you uh, the other day. Uh, so as we work our way back this way, right along this back fence here, we planted all of our elderberry uh, cuttings that we took a few weeks ago. Um, I'm gonna put a link down below to the video where we did that. Um, but yes, we have now uh, seven elderberry trees out here and they're still very small, but um, they are basically all the way down back here. Uh, so eventually we will have lots of elderberries. We have one peach tree here. So yeah, here is 
Here's one of them. Oh, they're still very small. We have them marked with this uh, orange tape so that we don't run over them or weed eat them or anything. But they're all the way down and you really can't see them. They're all so small still. Um, you may be able to see that little bit of orange right there. Um, but yeah, so we have, we have lots of little elderberries here and I'm really excited to see those grow in over the years. Oh no, this one, this one got pulled out. It didn't make it. That's okay. So there's six then. There's one. I guess I need to get out here and probably water these a little bit, but they look really, really good considering that I just took them from cuttings. Yeah, we have a nice little collection of elderberries out here. They go all the way to the fence. So down here in our vegetable garden, uh, this middle bed here is our asparagus bed. Um, as you can see, all of these uh, fronds you see are asparagus. Um, these are our previous crowns that we already planted. You can see here, there's asparagus coming up. So these that are large like this, We'll harvest those this year, but anything that's really small, uh, we will leave those and let them go to seed and grow more plants. Um, it allows the crowns underneath to get stronger, and um, and that way when we do start actually harvesting all of these, uh, they will give us uh, great strong plants. So you should not harvest anything under the size of a pencil. Uh, so these big ones are definitely good to go, and we'll pick those off later this week when they get a little taller. Um, but anyway, so all this is asparagus here, and we've gone ahead and added in those purple and let's see, the purple passion and the Mary, Mary Washington asparagus we've added in uh, to all these little spots where there's a bare spot. So there was a place here, a place in the middle here, a couple of spots here, and then we added a couple of rows down there. Uh, so eventually this whole bed will be just asparagus. So just outside the flower farm here, I've installed a brand new no dig bed and it's gonna extend to the other side of the fence too. I'm just not finished yet. But in this bed, so far we've added two grapes, sorry, two muscadimes. And then down there, you can kind of see that little stick. That is a white seedless grape. We've also added four rhubarb plants in here. And then we have plenty of room down here to add lots of other stuff and then also on the other side of the fence as well. So we have our muscadimes in here um, on the end and we're gonna let those grow up the fences a little bit. I'm probably not gonna let it go too far that way because um, once you hit this roof line here, that's all shaded for most of the day and that's probably not the best, but we can definitely let it grow a little ways here and all the way down the fence there. Um, so we'll have um, a few different ones here. And you can see this one has just started to leaf out a little bit. If maybe it'll focus on that little bitty leaf. So yeah, so that was a dormant cutting that we bought from Tractor Supply. And now that we've planted it and watered it and all that, it's it's starting to come out of dormancy and it'll start to grow. Uh, the same goes for uh, the rhubarb. You can see the rhubarb is starting to sprout out of the ground here. And I have just a little, this little thing stuck in here to mark it. Um, but rhubarb plants get really large, uh, which is why I spaced them out really far. And so there's another, so there we go. Another rhubarb there, 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 and there. And let's see if these all have started to come out. I don't see, I don't see this one yet, but I definitely see that one. It's right here. My, it's trying to focus on my hands. There we go. 
Yeah, so feeling good. Feeling good about the food forest. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video about building your own food forest. Um, I hope it was encouraging to you. I hope it made you think about some things that you can do on your own property to incorporate uh, some fruit and vegetable plants that will continue to repay you for years to come. Um, investing just a little bit of money now, something that you would spend on a night out to dinner, you could invest in some food that will last your family for a lifetime. Uh, so just something to think about in these weird times that we have right now. Um, it's kind of like, um, it's, it's food security, it's food insurance. It's, um, I've heard it referred to as a food 401k. I think the, the Texas Boys, is that the name of the channel? The Texas Boys, I like that channel. Um, but yeah, I think they call it a food 401k. It's, it's literally an investment into your food security, your food retirement, um, your kids inheritance of food, basically. Um, given giving giving back for years to come and you know when you have extra food from fruit trees you always tend to share that with others and so I feel like this isn't just something for me this is something for for everyone around me I have neighbors around and we all share you know when they have something extra they always come share with me and I intend to do the same with them um, so yeah I encourage everyone to plant their own little food forest um, if you live in a suburban neighborhood, instead of planting a boxwood in front of your house, plant some blueberry trees. I'm pretty sure no one will know. <laughs> no one has to know. Just plant blueberries instead. Work things into your landscaping. Instead of a, um, what is the name of that stupid tree? It's, uh, not stupid, but the Bradford pear, which doesn't do anything for anyone, plant an actual pear tree. It's beautiful. Look at it right here behind me. This can be just as ornamental as any other tree, but it can also produce food for you. So um, just add edible plants and flowers everywhere that you can um, and just encourage others to do the same. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and I cannot wait to see you guys next time here at Rowan Co Farms. You don't have